with showers and thunderstorms today with strong southwesterly winds to 37 miles per hour. It's a numbers game, especially for the situation that ran. We're coming off of a high water event here. The outdoors is not a hobby. It's not our passion. It is our way of life. We make the perfect cast, slow our breathing to execute a perfect shot, spend hours researching locations and techniques. Regardless of effort, we fail. This series is not about incredible bites or trophy animals. Our goal here at Day One Outdoors is to educate our viewers, utilizing new technology to offer a different perspective. Watch as we research new areas, plan out the day, and adjust to changing conditions. If not for other experienced outdoorsmen teaching me along the way, I wouldn't have this life. I owe it to them to pass this knowledge along. I owe it to you. Join us here on Day One Outdoors, and let's learn how to become more successful in the field and on the water from day one. We're out here on the Oregon coast today, and we're gonna be talking about how to be successful while jetty fishing. Now, this is something that's actually been really interesting and intriguing to me my whole life. I've actually read about it when I was a kid. I always wanted to do it. I've tried a couple times, but it was just always too rough. So what I really enjoy about doing this TV show is the fact that I get to come out and open up my world and target new fisheries. Now, we've done Lahontan cutthroat trout. We've done salmon fishing in Chile. Well, this one's in our own backyard and I've never done it. So we're gonna be going through exactly how to target these fish in the springtime from lingcod to bass and how to be safe out here on the jetty. The boys are up front right now, just starting to hit the rocks. The first thing that you wanna do when you come out to a jetty is take stock of the situation. Now today, it's a beautiful day. We're gonna be covering exactly what conditions you wanna look for when you're gonna be going out targeting these fish off the jetty. But again, safety first. So when you first set foot out here, Take a look at the jetty, watch what the waves are doing. Jetty fishing can be exciting and rewarding, but safety must always be a priority before you set foot onto your first boulder. Planning your trip to the jetty should start with researching weather and ocean conditions. Ideally, you would like to choose a day with a smaller tide exchange that remains positive. Rain will make the rocks very slick, so try to pick days with no precipitation in the forecast and light winds. The most important factor to consider is the ocean swell. What was it? I think it's the rock face. Was it? Yeah. I'm at about 15 feet. If the swell height is forecasted to be about five to six feet or higher, it is probably a good idea to plan for another day. One to three foot swells, light winds with no rain in the forecast is ideal. A bobber trailing so far behind it. <laughs> I'm gonna make a quick move a little bit further out the jetty. Um, I've watched those last wave set come through. They usually come in sets of three. We got a nice flat spot in behind it. Safe time to travel along the rocks. And the reason why is because these fish will cluster up, they'll group up. We've been sitting here fishing this for about 10 minutes. Not much to come of it, but a bite or two. You need to find that group. When you find that group, it should be some pretty fast action. So I'm going to keep keep searching here. You know, I do own three boats. We're going to wait to catch them out of a boat. That is more fun. It's about the challenge. Right, Sam? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm Two websites that are useful in planning your day at the coast are magicseaweed.com and the NOAA Marine Forecast sites. Magic Seaweed will give an accurate forecast on your swell height, direction, and period length, which is measured by how many seconds it is from the peak of one swell to the next. 
This site also shows tide times. It's festive. Have good footwear. Shoes with spikes and a buddy system. And always keep your eye on the ocean. You can see on the other side of the jetty in the mouth of the bay right here that the tide's starting to change. The incoming tide's starting to push. And you can see the color line between the green water from the river and the blue water from the ocean. That should help us out quite a bit. We need the water level to come up, get some more salinity in the water that we're trying to fish, and it should only get better for the next few hours. High tide today is at 2.30. Should be best right around 11 o'clock to 3. I'm just gonna take them all. Why don't you pick out uh, pick out two colors for me? Like a shirt juice one and a glow or something like that. Hyman got one? Hyman's on! Keep me out of the rocks! Oh, is that on the bobber rig? Uh oh, you're on a rock. Cab is on. I'm coming, Hyman. <laughs> hey, I'll get down there, Hyman. Camera ability. Yep. I got it right here. Got it? Yes, sir. Got it there? Yeah. You destroyed your bait there. Oh yeah, that light <laughs> caught my bait. <laughs> so that is a cabazon, and this fishery does not open up until July 1st. So, I mean, I got some pliers right there. There you go. It's got some teeth in there, so be careful. Yeah, there. There it goes. There you are. Shark <laughs> Sorry, your tail's gone on your trophy, buddy. These are really beautiful looking fish. What's that right there on top of the head? You see a little worm, little guy? Yeah. yeah. But again, this fishery doesn't open up until July 1, so we're going to put him back. First fish, Ivan. Oh, yeah. I see that, buddy. <laughs> there he goes. It can't be done. You can't catch fish from the jetty. We want legs, though. So I was casting right in that direction. The tide is still going out. And when I was drifting right up front of that corner, my barber actually lay down. And I was just checking it, figure out the fish is pulling. That's how I got it. Pacific trophy head, one ounce. Have to use a different one. That one, the tail got destroyed. So just trying a different color pattern. It should be good too. Fishfield is your one-stop shop online for the gear you need here in the Pacific Northwest and beyond. From salmon and steelhead, saltwater, trout and kokanee, even crabbing. Visit fishfield.com today to place an order with no sales tax and have the gear you need shipped fast. Fishfield.com, we have what the Northwest Outdoorsman needs. Every once in a while, a new lure comes along that catches every angler's attention. It could be because of all the irresistible colors and finishes, or the patented skip beat action, or maybe it's the wide variety of sizes designed for salmon, trout, walleye, steelhead, mackinac, and more. But just for the record, we know one thing for certain. We didn't design the maglip to catch fishermen. Yakima Bait Company. Another hour and then they'll be loaded up in here, you just don't know. Try and choose a day when the tide is coming in during the morning daylight hours. Incoming to high tide offers your best chance at success and the winds will typically pick up at the tide change that occurs midday. The NOAA site will give you an idea of what weather to expect and will also hopefully confirm the swell forecast for the area you are fishing. Now the right season. Good bobber down. Pacific toy head, two ounce, this two ounce bobber, two ounce bobber. There are plenty of sites available online that offer current conditions at buoys, 
and weather forecasts. There you go. <laughs> there he is. Oh, he's so good. Well, there it is. First one of the day so far. It's about a uh, quarter to noon right now, so we have about two and a half more hours of incoming tide. Hopefully this is just the start. Tide's definitely coming in. And I caught this one on a triple rig, just like you do out of a boat, but I'm using a bobber. And the reason why is because I can keep it out there at the depth that I want for a longer period of time. Instead of casting out there, then reeling it straight back in, I can keep it out there in the strike zone for a little bit longer. Seemed to work on this guy here, but honestly, the second it hit the water, the bobber went down. So just a good cast. Tasty morsel. Well, one mistake that you'll make out here on the jetty is leaving your gear behind. That's exactly what I did. I left the net behind. I left my little surf bag behind. So you got to walk all the way back here to come get it. But that's all right. I'm going to come check on Chris, see how he's doing. But these are the uh, surf bags from Fishfield. They're pretty slick. A lot of guys that fish for surf perch along the beach is like these, but it's great for out here on the jetty too. Open it up, drop your fish in there. And then what Hyben suggests too is that you put the clear plastic side towards your hip. That way on the drainage side, it doesn't just keep draining down your leg. I'm wearing waders today, so it's no big deal. But again, plastic side towards you. Then we can just sling it. And now I can keep my hands free with my fish at my side. One down, a lot more to go. Cool fish, blue, some copper, a lot of teeth. He's real, he's real close to legal, I don't know. Is he? He's real close. Oh, he ate that, that glow one, huh? Yeah, he, he got it. Pick it up, dump it, pick it up, dump it, pick it up, dump it. Boom. And I mean, he hits the bottom and then, you know, he's basically eating it right at the dirt. So you're basically running like a bass jig. Yeah. Just thumping that hard cover. Like you're, like you're fishing uh, like the river, you know, we're dragging like a football head. So, put a quick tape on him. He's going to be really close. Yeah, I think he's a little short. I think he's going to be a little short. But... One. Oh, yeah, he's an inch and a half short. Uh, Got to be 22 inches. All right, we're going to let it go. about half a dozen boats come in from being offshore and that's probably because they've already limited out. Fishing from a jetty, you're at a disadvantage for sure. We could easily come out here in the boats, but frankly, not everyone has a boat. You wanna come out here, you wanna learn how to catch some fish without having a $50,000 vessel, you can do it from the jetty. And hopefully, we'll show you how once we get it figured out. But right now, we're just starting to see the bite pick up a little bit. We're gonna try the ocean side. We haven't tried the river side. We've got a couple bites over there. This ocean side should really be where these fish are at, especially near the high slack. So I'm gonna square up here next to Hyven, put on a little herring with a spin glow and hoochie skirt on it, a little bit different. right there. Get the rocks. Ivan's got a fish on right now, but part of the struggles of fishing here on the jetty, especially Lincoln, they go right into the rocks and you're reeling them up the jetty, so that's pretty tough. You gotta keep your rods up high and a lot of power, but he's trying to work on it right now. He might have, oh, well, I don't know. He might not get that one, unfortunately. It's in the rock.
gotta keep them high up out of the rocks. I just wait for a swell. There's a swell. Big ling. <laughs> First cast without with the choby head. I soaked it. Pull the broke your shrimp, that pink color. Out here, bottom fish, you can't be pink and white. Let's put a quick tape measure on him. He's gonna be close. Oh yeah, no problem. Right about 24 inches. Minimum length is 22. Got our first keeper of the day. So I've got another hour and a half of incoming tide. Like it. Link cut dinner. All right, let's take a look at this. I'm trying to pull the hook out of his mouth. But he ate this choby body swim bait so deep. Let's see if I can open up his mouth. It's stuck all the way back in his throat. <laughs> I can't get it out. <laughs> I want my swim bait back. It's my last one. Hey, oh, dang it, he picked the tail. <laughs> See the leftover of the tails right in there. He wanted that swim bait. Dang it. Well, find another color. This is my last one of the pink. It's my favorite color. Before I switch up though, let's get that fish all bled out. So what you do is first, we worked really hard to get these fish. It's hot out here. We're gonna bleed them. Take all the blood out of the meat on both sides. Throw it into our surf bag. And once we get them in there, I'm gonna put them into the shade. So it's two fish person limit for links. I'm halfway there. There we go. Now that we got them in there, put them in the shade and find another swim bait. Hi, Ben, you got another one of those pink ones? I have a bag. Do you? I'll get some for you. Yeah. That works, huh? Yeah. It, it, oh, it, the tail it, broke. Yeah, he swallowed the whole thing. He <laughs> swallowed the tail. Yep, and I just threw a bunch of that shrimp scent on there too. Uh-huh. From here? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yep. Can I borrow some? Got a bunch in the bag. <laughs> Salmon swim up to 3,000 miles to return to their exact place of birth to reproduce. Well, most of the time. Drove all the way out here four frickin' hours to come out here and come film a jetty fishing episode and fish for three hours and don't catch a single fish. Yeah, you get a little worried. But we're getting near the high slack. Everything's getting better. Maybe. One fish. It's not a pattern yet. Three's a pattern. No surprise. That guy's super nice, so he's been helping us out. Hopefully, he gets that one. Well, I just moved down the jetty a little bit, actually closer to shore. And we've been having spotty action. And from what I know from fishing from the boat, you have to keep moving. Now, there was a guy down here, uh, one of the locals, that was just putting out a clinic, showing us up. So, of course, he left. What am I going to do? Move right down to where he was. But what I'm going to do a little bit too, a lean cut just cannot resist fresh bait. So 
So just put down some herring. It's just red label herring that I brined up and just some regular old brine and bright. Put a hoochie on top of it and a glow spin glow. Then I'm gonna fish it underneath this bobber. And the reason why is because I can let this thing sit out there for a long time. So I'm just gonna let the current and the tide flush it along the jetty here left and right. Just kind of cover that edge. I'll keep adjusting my depths from 15 feet of water out to 30 feet of water. Work this edge back and forth. See if I can't figure out where the fish are. Fingers crossed. Getting close to the high slack because that wind's starting to blow. We fished out here like a week ago. It was really good. There was a lot of wind. The tide's about the same. It's coming in. It's coming in for a few hours. And I don't know. The fish just aren't biting really good today. I don't know if it's a moon thing or there's, what, you know, there's more to it. But we can try a little while longer. Hopefully something turns on for us. We caught fish. I mean, most of this, this run, really. Okay. I mean, I, we were probably touching fish. Well, maybe not quite to the same. A little breezy and frothy. Doing everything we can at this point, see if we can't find a few fish. So here's the long and the short of it. We're at high slack right now. The forecast that we had for today was not too bad of a swell, and really it's not that bad of a swell at all. What usually happens is at high slack, the wind picks up. The forecast was for a three to eight mile an hour wind. It's sustained 15. That makes it really tough to fish. When you're fishing the jetty, you need to have ideal, perfect conditions. Now this is gonna be typical fisherman talk right here, but I really did expect to come out here with the highest expectations. I thought for sure we were gonna come out and just lay waste to these fish. We had good reports all last week. The weather looked decent, but here's what I'm gonna blame it all on. The Umpco River blew out here last week, got really high, puts a lot of fresh water out here. Those fish might've pushed off into uh, deeper haunts. I didn't see too many boats hanging around the jetty here at all. Um, so that's one factor. The other factor is bigger tides. We're getting close to those seven, eight foot exchanges. What you really want are those two to three foot exchanges that stay positive, that three foot to six foot, so your low tides at three, high tides at six, those real narrow windows where it stays in a very strong plus tide, keeps all that salt water here close to the jetty. So yeah, we tried to force it a little, but I honestly thought that we were gonna be able to come out here and crush them pretty good. Um, I'm going to push the limits just a little bit, of course, safety first. Come over here on the river side, on the windward side. Leeward side is definitely the best place to be, protected from all this wind. But I'm going to push down over here where it's a little bit calmer and see if there's fish on this side of the jetty. See if we can't scrounge up one or two more. We're not doing bad, you know, we've got half a dozen fish or so. It's just, it's hoping for more. I want to take some fish home, fish tacos. Oh, this could be tough. Can't hardly feel the bait. Remember, it is just a fish. If you are unsure of the conditions when you arrive, then don't take the risk. When the conditions are right, fishing from the boulders offers bank anglers an incredible opportunity to harvest rockfish and lingcod from February through June during the spawn. Well, I'm over it. <laughs> well, let's go meet up with the other guys. This sucks. Grab my gear. Hit back on the leeward side. Although our bags were not filled with rockfish, we still managed to land cabazon, bass, and lean cod. For our first time fishing from the rocks, not a bad day at all. We all learned much from this trip. Well, I did my part. I don't know what took you guys so long. 
Ooh, fish taco. Casting at angles, keeping your gear close fish to the rocks seem to provide the best action. Also, we way overpacked. One rod with a backpack and swim baits to bang against the rocks is plenty. Pack light, be prepared, be safe, and you too will find success out on the jetty.